Hi, I'm Kevin Don, the Get Fit Guy, and this week I'm going to answer a few of your burning questions that have dropped into the Get Fit Guy inbox recently. Now, firstly, I'm so grateful to get emails and feedback from the audience. I do take the time to answer the emails I get every week, and I love seeing how curious you are about exploring your health and fitness. So if you also feel like sending me an email, send it over to getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. Maybe you'll hear it in the show. This week, I've chosen three messages I've received, and I want to answer them because although questions are always entirely subjective, we can all learn from them in an objective way. So first up, we have Jack in California, right on the beach next to LAX in El Segundo. Jack asks, I've been doing Peloton strength workouts at home. These are efficient workouts that tend to incorporate little rest, lots of time under tension. I have a programming length question. I was doing a program like chest and back for 20 minutes one day, followed by some hit cardio, like a bike or run. Arms and shoulders for 20 minutes the next day, etc. Then I started doing 30 minutes of each. Now I'm wondering if I should go up to 40 minutes. But at what point is there a law of diminishing marginal returns where adding extra time to the strength workout is not going to give me the results and thus not be worth it? So thank you for the email, Jack. First thing I notice here is the expression efficient workouts. I also notice there isn't any specific goal mentioned in your email. So I can't really say that Peloton strength workouts are efficient since without a defined goal, they may be moving you away from the overall goal. That is if we define efficiency as maximum productivity with minimal wastage. If you have a goal, then by definition, Peloton is actually inefficient because it's a general product. The trainings are not tailored to you and therefore will mostly be wastage of effort. Do think that efficiency has entered the fitness vernacular as a byword for just getting blazed with maximal effort in minimal time, something I don't necessarily agree with. Now, to address the programming length question, and if there's a point of diminishing returns, yes, eventually the volume itself is going to end up being impossible to recover from. So I'm assuming you've increased the dose from 20 to 30 minutes because you hit a plateau. But I would say a strength plateau is going to occur not because of length of the program, but because you simply aren't capable of creating enough stress with dumbbells. At some point, you need to get onto a heavy object, most likely a barbell, maybe a sandbag. A dumbbell isn't going to provide a meaningful strength adaptation for most people outside of the novice training phase. Strength endurance, yes. Absolute strength, no. So my advice in this situation, bearing in mind that I don't have the data on your ultimate goal, but feel free to ping me another email, is that you need to increase the load, but not the volume. More volume may begin to result in overuse injuries. If you're looking for strength, barbell is king. Dumbbells are for accessory work. If you're thinking about doing 40 minutes of Peloton, you're already at the point of diminishing returns. Now, there are also tons of really great strength facilities out your way. And if you need some guidance, I can recommend some for you. All right, next up, Gustavo from Brazil, who writes, I'm the father of a four and a half year old boy that's currently asking to start a martial art. Since jiu-jitsu is quite common in Brazil, I'm considering enrolling him in this style. Which style would be best for kids? And how old should I consider appropriate for my boy to start a martial art? Well, this is a great question and actually right up my alley. Given that I've been doing martial arts now for quite some time, I won't say how long because I'm actually quite secretive about my old age. Now, which style is best for kids is really the same style that's best for anyone. That is the style they enjoy the most. Some people really love to grapple. Some people love to strike. Some people like to kick. Other people like to punch. Some people want to immerse themselves in a highly technical sport. In other words, other people just want to smash a bag or pads for an hour. 
So my advice to you is to let your son participate in a wide range of martial arts, to try karate, boxing, Muay Thai, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, see which ones he prefers. Because the biggest predictor for success in any sport or fitness endeavor is adherence. In turn, the biggest predictor of adherence is enjoyment. So, in terms of how old to start a child, well, as soon as they can learn and move their body. Motor learning is what's most important for kids. So I would say that the ability of the coach to recognize how to train youth is more important than the age of the youth itself. We also have to bear in mind that children grow at all different rates, not so much at four and a half years old, but at 12 or 13, you might have one child who looks 12 and another who looks 17. It all depends on their own individual journey of physical development. So definitely have a look for a coach who's more concerned with motor patterns and teaching positions and shapes than one who's trying to teach sport. Make sure that that in turn aligns with whatever martial art your son has expressed the most enjoyment out of participating in. And finally, we have Grace from Lyon in France. Grace says, Hi, Coach Kevin. I'm a former rugby player and powerlifting champion. Last year, I developed depression due to not having a sporting career anymore. I've stopped going to the gym. This past week, my friend wanted to start at the gym, so convinced me to go too. But the feelings just aren't the same. I don't have the same rush. I want to go back to enjoying training. How should I go about this? Well, hi, Grace. Firstly, thank you so much for the email and for the vulnerability and for wanting to move yourself forwards. That's the first step. Just being able to be objective. You know, I've, I've looked at many athletes and worked with many athletes. And it can be so difficult for them to go from having a, a training or, or sporting goal with this purpose to what they're doing every time they set foot in the gym or a training facility to now having or feeling like you have no purpose. I'd really encourage you to check out my first episodes on the show where I define coaching and also health if you haven't already heard them. Now, not having a sporting goal doesn't mean that you don't have to have a goal anymore, but it might be that you need to self-consult in some way. Just sit down, have a think, or write down what's important to you right now. Now, you mentioned enjoying training, so you've already identified a metric for yourself. So what kind of training is that you enjoy? Try to think about that and figure that out, even if it just involves a little period of trial and error. Try some new things, you know, try training with the goal of fun or with the goal of health or try a new activity like maybe a dance class or indoor climbing if it's that the sport you were already playing triggers that competitiveness in you. Try new things and see which ones you enjoy. A satisfaction comes from having goals, being able to check off little landmarks on the journey towards that goal. With your goal no longer being high performance, it might be admirable to think about health. So the goal might just be lowering your resting heart rate by improving your aerobic capacity or holding your body weight in an active hang for 60 seconds or moving 360 degrees in space. So my advice is just to take some time to write down some new goals and think how you might be able to go about achieving those. I don't think necessarily that as a, a former athlete, you'll be able to feel satisfied in any way just drifting along and going to a gym without any defined goal. So good luck with that. Definitely email me and let me know what you come up with. Now, thanks again to everyone who emailed in and giving me the opportunity to serve you with my knowledge and experience. Really means a lot to me. And happy holidays. Get Fit Guy is a quick and dirty tips podcast. Thanks to the team at Quick and Dirty Tips, Adam Cecil, Morgan Christensen, Holly Hutchings, and Davina Tomlin. Our intern is Cameron Lacey, and I'm your host, Kevin Don. If you have a question for me, leave me a voicemail at 510-353-3104 or send me an email at getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. For more information about the show, visit quickanddirtytips.com or check out the show notes in your podcast app. Mm-hmm.